You're tuned in to Knights Re-Air, presented by Dex Imaging, a proud sponsor of UCF Athletics. Dex Imaging is the nation's largest independent provider of office technology with a local touch. Dex Imaging, do business better. And in part by Tico People's Gas, delivering natural gas that helps you save energy. Visit peoplesgas.com. And this UCF football game, sponsored in part by Todd Minor Law. Involved in an accident? Get a former insurance company attorney on your side. Undefeated 8th ranked Louisville versus a Central Florida team at 4-1. A win over Penn State coached by the mild-mannered George O'Leary. Our Inside Access tonight presented by Wells Fargo. Hey, uh, hey, hold it up. Hey, 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 hold it up. Hold it up, I said. Hey, man, we got to recognize quicker. You look like you're lost out here. Get over there. When that back releases, you should be outside him. You're running inside of him, which makes it easy for him to get out. Turn it turn it out! Hey, you two, get down, failed! Stand there looking at McCray again. George O'Leary from our ESPNU All Access Series. You can catch it every Wednesday at 5 o'clock. UCF versus Louisville for some important injury updates. Here's Allison Williams. Carter, a couple of Teddy Bridgewater's favorite weapons were game time decisions tonight. Wide receivers Devontae Parker and Kai De La Cruz. Parker missed last week's game with a shoulder injury. De La Cruz stepped up well in his absence, but he was dealing with a groin injury this week. Charlie Strong wanted to evaluate both players during warm-ups but the guys looked good they were flying around and coach strong gave me the subtle thumbs up so they should both be ready to go they will play and it seems the Teddy Bridgewater show will be operating at full strength Charlie Strong in his fourth season as head coach at Louisville Ranked undefeated Louisville versus Central Florida on Friday night. Short kickoff taken by Ronell Hall to near the 30 yard line. Louisville won the toss, deferred UCF football to start. So we see Blake Bortles and the Central Florida offense. The junior from Oviedo in the Orlando, Air, Orlando area grew up going to UCF games. Told us he saw Dante Culpepper at the Citrus Bowl. He just can't remember it. He was five years old. Several schools wanted him as a tight end, but UCF offered him the chance to play quarterback. 6'4, 230. Now a junior. He's developed into a good one. Play fake on first down, bobbled incomplete, intended for J.J. Warden. Carter, Blake Bortles is probably the best quarterback no one's heard of. Unless you're a diehard college football fan, you know, and follow UCF, you're probably not aware of what he's done. But he has quietly had an outstanding year, leading UCF to big wins at Penn State. They have really had South Carolina on the ropes. They only lost by three to South Carolina at home. And he is an outstanding quarterback, very accurate. And he's got enough mobility, too, to make you miss. His best games were against Penn State and South Carolina had a career high in the South Carolina three point loss. Play fake again on second down. This time complete goes right back to J.J. Warden who is laid out by Calvin Pryor. The free safety delivers a big blow to J.J. Warden. And by number 25 Calvin Pryor. This game has that sort of intensity level where there's going to be some hitting out there on this field. And Louisville's safeties, both Calvin Pryor and Hakeem Smith, both very physical. You see the blow that Calvin Pryor delivers right on J.J. Wharton. No flag thrown for targeting. Get a 15 yards on the play. First down. Boy, that could have easily been called targeting by 
Calvin Pryor, and one of the key parts of the targeting rule is basically intent. Did he intend to launch? Apparently, to me, it looked like a good yeah. football play. Sized him up, didn't go high, didn't lead with that helmet to helmet. Unfortunately for J.J. Wharton, ended up hitting him there. Storm Johnson, first carry for the junior running back from Loganville, Georgia, who began his career in Miami. Chance to look at our impact players, brought to you by Longhorn Steakhouse. Right on cue, one of them right there, Storm Johnson, the running back for UCF, former Miami Hurricane, highly touted out of high school. And then the defensive ends, both of them, Marcus Smith and Lorenzo Malden, the defensive ends, they're going to have to put pressure on Blake Bortles, make his night a long one. That's Teddy Bridgewater. He gets the football next. UCF driving on the opening possession for the Knights. Tips and incomplete. There's the pressure from Lorenzo Malden, one of those terrific defensive ends. Well, you can see what UCF is doing here early. A lot of play action, little zone read action in the backfield, getting it out of Blake Bortles' hand quickly, but a good adjustment by Louisville defensively. You see number 94, Malden, right in your screen, realized he couldn't get to Bortles. Next best thing he could do, get it up and bat it down. It's one of those things you're always advocating. Absolutely. Your, your, your good friends, the defensive ends. <laughs> yeah. Bortles rolls. Finds Storm Johnson, who has room to run. Big block on the outside to send Storm Johnson inside the Louisville 15. It was Justin Tooks, the tight end, who had a crushing block to free Storm Johnson for 28. Remember who laid the big hit for Louisville? Calvin Pryor. Well, he just had a little bit of payback on that run right there. Coming back against the grain, Justin Tooks. After the middle of the screen, watch him coming from the other direction, right there, right in the middle. Very clean, clean hit. It's going to be, it's got that vibe. It's going to be a physical ball game tonight. The first and only American Athletic Conference matchup between Central Florida and Louisville. Johnson, nothing on first down. The middle linebacker, Preston Brown, makes the stop. Time Louisville showing pressure right up the gut. Very intent on stopping that run game up the middle. And that is J.J. Wharton, who took the big lick earlier from Calvin Pryor. Opening drive into the red zone for Central Florida. Storm Johnson tripped on, third down. Lorenzo Malden makes the stop again. 67% touchdowns when they get inside their opponent's 20. Pretty good numbers for the Knights. Third down, a place where Louisville likes to run a lot of different games. They like to play with the quarterback and the offensive line. Really disguise thing. Have a lot of guys standing around. to the end zone. It is tipped and intercepted. It's Calvin Pryor who has the interception. An INT a week ago in the win over Rutgers. The big blow delivered on the opening drive by UCF and now an INT in the end zone. Did he keep his foot in bounds? Man, it looks like it was just in. You see it right inside the white paint. What an acrobatic play by Calvin Pryor. Both these safeties for Louisville, so impressive. Does the back foot hit as he's juggling it out of bounds? Not out of bounds until a body part touches out of bounds. Still inbounds. Clearly, when he first contacts, is that back foot go out? I think you got it. Possession, foot inbounds. Louisville's up to the line after the INT from Pryor. It's in the books now, Louisville football. Bridgewater flings to the outside. Damian Copeland makes the grab. 
So Pryor, who had the tremendous game last Thursday against Rutgers, 14 tackles, an INT in that Rutgers win. The big hit, and now an interception in the end zone to end the UCF opening draw. Thought it was a little bit of a sloppy throw by Blake Bortles. Looked like he was almost trying to throw it away. If you're going to throw it away, make sure it's way out of bounds. So now it's Bridgewater and the Cardinals, both Sonoris Perry and Dominique Brown, joining Teddy Bridgewater. Play clock at one at zero. Louisville apparently gets it all. Looked like a lot of motion on the line as well with no flags. Busted play by the Cardinals. It's third down. Well, I thought UCF was offsides too. They clearly had a defender that looked like he had crossed through the neutral zone. Watch number 41 right there. Got an outstanding job. That, that jump, that's why the play was blown up. So not only it looked like Louisville with a busted call, but I think the officials blew that one as well. No flag thrown, third and six. <laughs> Out of the pistol. Bridgewater over the middle, right at the sticks. Big spot coming. Thomas Niles finally makes the stop. It is first down Louisville. Teddy Bridgewater, the face of the Louisville program, almost the Miami Hurricane. He was committed there, but when Randy Shannon was fired, Bridgewater decommitted, thought he was going to go to LSU. They signed Zach Mettenberger. That's Rose Murphy, Teddy Bridgewater's mother. You saw again the terrific piece. And ran just prior to this game about the inspiration they have offered one another. Bridgewater over the middle, it's tipped, almost picked. Clayton Gethers gets two hands on it, and that was almost the third INT of the year by Bridgewater. That was something I noticed last week against Rutgers, just early in the game, trying to force balls into really tight windows. I know he's confident, he's got the skills, but that was just a forced pass right there by Teddy Bridgewater. And it's, it's one of those situations for Louisville. I know Charlie Strong is trying to avoid all the chatter, but they know they need to impress. When they're on national television, people are watching. They need to win, and they need to win impressive. As much as you hate it and you think it's unfair, it's just the way it is. On second down, this is Sonoris Perry, the senior. Bust through tackles to get to the 36. Mention again that even though Louisville won to go to 6-0, beat Rutgers by two touchdowns, they were jumped by both LSU and Texas A&M in the top 10. Third down and four, opening drive for Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals. Not the football on the INT in the end zone from Calvin Pryor. Rolling complete for another first down. Eli number Rogers five, makes the grab. Louisville moving the pocket just a little bit for Teddy Bridgewater on a little half rollout. Beautifully executed by Louisville on a third and manageable. I think that's the key that they want to try to stay in. This third and manageable. Have positive plays on first and second down. And a lot of that lays on the quarterback's shoulders. What do you do with the football when nothing's there? Do you check it down? Do you take your shots down the field? Got to be smart and set your team up in the right spot. Louisville's best in the country, 64% on third down. Two for two on this opening draw. On first down, flayed on the screen to Eli Rogers again. Near the 50, we look at our impact players, brought to you by Longhorn Steakhouse. Well, Teddy Bridgewater's special, but he's got some special weapons on the outside. Devontae Parker was a question mark. He's going tonight. Damian Copeland, really the only receiver that's got the fresh legs, the full 100% go of health. And then for UCF, Deion Green, the defensive end, he's got to mess with Teddy Bridgewater. He's got to get in the backfield, knock him around. Even if you don't sack him, hit him as much as you can. Teddy can take a pop. We found that out yes. against Florida in the Sugar Bowl last year on that opening drive. Play fake. Pressure. 
Bridgewater delivers. There's Devontae Parker. Welcome back, number nine. Right shoulder injury in the first quarter versus Temple. Didn't play at all last week against Rutgers, and you can see he's enjoying being back out there. This is what makes Bridgewater special. He's got the athleticism to run, but he never runs too early. Watch him here. He gets a little bit of pressure, squeaks outside the pocket, keeps his eyes down the field for the big play. We see Parker, we just mentioned about his health issues. They were very concerned about his shoulder. Good to see him look like he's at full speed. 28-yard gain for Parker. Pushes Louisville to the UCF 22-yard line. Opening drive for the Cardinals. That's Sonoris Perry, one of three tailbacks that Louisville will use. He pushes inside the 20. And we see from both Central Florida and Louisville a more traditional no hurry up, no rush, very little spread offenses from both these teams. Yep, more traditional. You see him huddling up. A lot more under center for Teddy Bridgewater. And I think this is really going to help Teddy Bridgewater as he transitions to the NFL whenever he does decide to go there. It'll make it that much smoother for him that a lot of these concepts and things they're asking him to do here in this offense, they'll ask him to do at the next level. Safe to say it's a matter of months. Right. <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater's on track to earn his degree in December as well at the end of his junior year. Midway through his junior year. On second down, Bridgewater to the outside. That's Eli Rogers, his best friend growing up, Eli Rogers. He and Teddy, Teddy told us they're like brothers, known each other since they were six years old and part of a healthy stable of Florida players on this Louisville side. A lot of these guys played high school football against each other in Florida. Charlie Strong had a long history of coaching in the state of Florida at the University of Florida, recruited down there, and knows the territory extremely well. He's brought them up here to Louisville in a very smart move. Third and one, shifting two tight ends. Motion. Fullback there, I think, got a little bit antsy. Ball start, offense, number 46. It's a five-yard penalty. And it remains third down. That's Lamar Atkins, who just moved from <laughs> linebacker to fullback. This is his first action on offense, a redshirt freshman from Miami. About three weeks ago, they, they transitioned him over to the offensive side of the ball. I think some of that inexperience showed there on a critical third down situation. Third and one, now bumped back to a third and six. This is where Teddy Bridgewater is so dangerous because if you try to blitz him, he finds the mismatches. He knows where to go with the football. Night show pressure. Picked up. Bridgewater hit as he throws to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Eli Rogers. Teddy Bridgewater takes the hit and delivers his 19th touchdown pass of the season to his best friend from Miami, Eli Rogers. That's exactly what I was talking about, Carter. UCF brought seven guys, all three. I don't know what they're looking at here, the officials. A previous play is under review, apparently. Let's see if Eli Rogers did come down with it. And it looked like a layup. Uh, you can see it scored out at the end there. You see where they might want to take a look at it. But sure, look, he had possession when he went to the ground. And then after he's rolling over, it looked like the UCF defender kind of knocked it away from him. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Carter, back to what I was saying. UCF brought all three linebackers. Bridgewater knew he had to get rid of the football, lofted a nice touch pass out to Eli Rogers where he could get it and nobody else. And that's something I saw in Bridgewater back at the Sugar Bowl. I got to cover that game for ESPN Radio. 
Florida was barreling down on him numerous times on third down. He would know he was going to get hit, and he would loft it out there right in the perfect spot every time. UCF on the opening drive throws an interception in the end zone. Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals make sure they get in the end zone on offense. On third down, Bridgewater, a perfect three for three, including the touchdown strike. Well, you got this little bit to the right. You got it. You are so going to make the team. Addition Financial can't help you with your jump shot. But for home ownership, affordable financing, and savings accounts, count us in. The home of My Morning Jacket, Louisville, Kentucky. That's 4th Street Live, downtown. Home of Jack Fries, the Louisville Cardinals. You're a big music fan. I mean, I'm not surprised at all that you know that. Yeah, Jim James and My Morning Jacket, not many better. Opening touchdown drive for Louisville. Five of the seven opening possessions this year for Louisville. They have put it in the end zone. Central Florida coach George O'Leary said, the key to this game is we have to withstand the early onslaught by Louisville. An interception in the end zone. Cardinals get a touchdown. This is Stanback from the goal line. And Stanback knocked out of bounds by the kicker, John Wallace. So Blake Bortles and Central Florida get the football back, trailing 7-0. Here in Louisville, Teddy Bridgewater has a TD pass to get it started for the undefeated Cardinals. There he is, good, strong, Herbie. <laughs> I am powerful. That doesn't want to give up. I hope you get some industrial strength soap when you go to the store and get the red paint. It is homecoming week here at the University of Louisville. Could be a Red Sox fan too with that beard he's sporting. Yeah. You know? yeah. Beards are all the rage. We had everything. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams for your Friday night matchup. UCF, Central Florida against the undefeated Louisville Cardinals. Blake Bortles handing off to William Stanback. The true freshman stopped by Roy Phylon. Stayed on the road, favored against the Tigers. Bortles looking for a screen, comes back the other way. That's complete to Josh Reese. The terrific Louisville defense ready, and it's third down. Well, UCF drove the length of the field on the first drive, but Louisville all of a sudden swarming to the football, looking very much like the defense last week that had eight sacks and four interceptions versus Rutgers. They're playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. And George O'Leary talked about the early onslaught. I think he was talking about the offensive side of the ball, but he better be careful because it's coming on the defensive side of the ball right here. Bortles pressure. A three and out by UCF. So the first two possessions for the Knights, they drive it all the way down to the end zone. INT. Then a three and out on the second possession against statistically the best defense in the nation. We talk so much about the defensive ends for Louisville providing pressure, but they take up so much of your attention. That time it was the inside, the interior of the defensive line that got the pressure. Nearly got the punt block too. Caleb Houston's punt hits inside the 30, down by UCF right around the 33. So the second offensive possession coming for Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals after an opening touchdown drive with a junior from Miami. 
at Blaze Pizza. Artisanal quality at crazy fast speed is what we're all about. Fresh dough made from scratch daily. Choose any toppings you like. Then it's just 180 seconds in our blazing hot oven for fast-fired perfection. Enjoy your Blaze favorites for delivery or carryout. Right now, we're offering delivery specials through our app or online, including a one-topping large pizza for just $10 or two two-topping large pizzas for $22. Download the Blaze Pizza app or visit us online at blazepizza.com. Arby's taking it to the house. UCF tried it. Louisville did it. Blake Ford is a little bit sloppy on this throw, but Calvin Brow with the circus catch. It's one foot in bounds for the interception. And then Bridgewater, watch the touch on that pass right as he's drilled. Lays it out for Eli Rogers for Louisville's first touchdown of the game. That's a staple of the Teddy Bridgewater passing game. He really does. You talk about throwing guys open. He's got great anticipation, and he puts just enough touch on. He's got that. It's really something you can't teach either. Just a knack that he's got for laying that ball out there for his receivers. Now, 19 touchdown passes against only two INTs. One of his INTs was late in the first half. Deep ball against Rutgers last Thursday completes to Copeland. We check with Allison. It seems right now UCF isn't happy with their pressure packages. Coach O'Leary came over to his defense. He said we got to get some heat on this kid. Every time we do you guys are letting up. Other coaches reminding the defense they have to get off their blocks when they're blitzing. It's a great point Allison but it's easier said than done because when you take that risk you're giving up matchups on the outside one on one and nobody makes you pay more than Teddy Bridgewater. Toss left for Dominique Brown. The junior missed all of last year with an injury against the uh, solid UCF defense. I mean, they're only giving up 17 points per game. That's 11th in the nation. That passing touchdown by Teddy Bridgewater was just the third passing touchdown that UCF has allowed all year. This UCF team is a good squad. I feel like they have the resume where they could easily be a top 25 team, but just because they don't play in a power conference, they don't have a name brand. They don't get that respect, but their resume going to Penn State and winning, only losing by three to South Carolina in a very tough, hard fought loss. They've got a good squad. Night show pressure on first down. Louisville picks it up, leaving a wide open Ryan Hubble to take it inside the UCF 20. You talk about the risk you run when you blitz. Louisville did an outstanding job picking that up. Here's the tight end right here. Watch him just run up the hash. Bridgewater sees it all the way, holds the safety with his eyes, and then delivers the perfect bullet to a wide open Ryan Hubble down the field. 33 yard pickup by Hubble from Council Bluffs, Iowa. Nine for 10 now from Bridgewater. Dominique Brown on first down through the contact from the middle linebacker Terrence Plummer who eventually makes the tackle. Jim Fleming the defensive coordinator for UCF said hey we have to try to make them one dimensional. I'll tell you what how would you like to have that choice. Do you want to take away Louisville's running game and then give it up to Teddy Bridgewater. I mean that's it's really tough and now they're not having much success against the run either. So Louisville really looking their chops with their playbook because it's all open right now. A minute 24 to go in the first quarter and yet if Louisville goes up 14 to nothing it would be a big blow for the Knights upset chances. Fake the toss. Bridgewater rolling throwing complete fumble. Hubble makes the grab fumbles it and now a discussion about where it went out of bounds. Where the ball would have gone out the back of the end zone and hit the pile on when Hubble fumbled it. Was fumbled forward out of bounds. Will be brought back to the spot of the fumble and it'll be a first down. That's a big break for Louisville because if that ball had gone into the back of the end zone, watch a look at Hubble as that ball is coming loose. <laughs> so the, the fumble out of bounds rule is meant to give the advantage to the defense who creates the fumble. That's why they say when it goes out of bounds bring it back to the point where it was fumbled. 
But Louisville maintains possession, and now it's first and goal, but before first and goal. Timeout. I think George O'Leary is wondering about that call. So Dave Kataya, our rules expert in Bristol, joins us to uh, explain the spotting and the fumble out of bounds. Dave? If that ball hits the pylon in the end zone, it's a touchback. It's the same as the ball going into and out of the end zone. However, if that is short and doesn't hit the pylon, it is returned to the spot of the fumble. So uh, it's hard to tell here. Looks like the player's foot may kick the pylon. Let's take a look at the ball and see what the ball does. That's key. Looks like the ball hits it. Now that, that pylon is out of bounds behind the goal line, which means that's a fumble forward into the end zone. That should result in a touchback. Touchback. Yeah. Yes. Touchback, I think we earlier it's something else, but touchback. That's back. what George O'Leary is trying to get done with that timeout call. He wants the officials to take a look at that. The replay booth reviews every play no matter what, but obviously with the timeout there from George O'Leary, he's giving them an opportunity to <laughs> yes. look at it again and uh, see if they're going to take it to an official review. Which I believe, yes indeed, it is now in official review. Critical call coming. Guess what I just did? I got a night pass. Night pass? Yeah, ePass is now offering night fans UCF branded toll stickers. See for yourself my windshield now sports night black and gold. They'll certainly see you coming. But does night pass work on all toll roads in Florida? Yes, it's accepted on all toll roads in Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina. Go night pass. It's how nights travel. Score big and save more with night pass. Go to getnightpass.com. Getnightpass.com. Hey night fans. What's on your windshield? The play. The ball was fumbled forward and it hit the pylon, which by rule is a touchback. The ball will be placed in the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for UCF. That was just moments ago during commercial break. So just as Dave Kataya explained, yep. that pylon makes it out of bounds, therefore it's touchback. And that is a huge break for UCF. Just like it looked like Louisville was going to drive in for a score. UCF gets a call in their favor. Now can they capitalize? And give credit to George O'Leary for taking yep. the timeout so that the replay official had an extra look at it, decided to take it under review, and UCF gets a football. And what we said was a critical possession for the Knights. Well, Hubble fumbles it, and you see it clearly hit the pylon right there. And as Dave Kataya pointed out, that pylon is actually in the end zone. Out of bounds. So the officials got it right. And you know, you talk about the review process. George O'Leary, very strategic there. A little surprised Louisville didn't try to snap it quicker. Some teams have a fire call where if they know it's call is questionable, they get up there because if you run a play, they can't go back and review it. 13th takeaway of the year by the UCF defense. Blake Bortles and the night offense with the seconds ticking away in the first quarter. That's complete. Josh Reese short of the first down. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. George O'Leary said we have to survive the early onslaught by Louisville. After an INT by UCF, touchdown Louisville, but it's UCF football as we go to the second. At Wendy's, we got you with open drive throughs and delivery. So get a biggie bag loaded with a bacon double stack and all this for just five bucks. It's a big deal at a small price. Drive through Wendy's or get one delivered today. The Louisville Cardinals, a touchdown on the opening drive, but a fumble at the goal line gives it back to UCF. First play of the second quarter will be third down and one for Blake Borders and the Knights. Sneak. Really close. That's the 6 4 2 30 quarterback Blake Bortles sneaking against a terrific defensive line for Louisville. Louisville had everybody and their brother up in the gaps to make sure 
that UCF didn't get an easy quarterback sneak in that situation. It was such a short distance for UCF to go. Look at everybody up in the gaps. And they've, they just shut it down right there. I'm surprised UCF didn't have some kind of an audible where they could switch to the outside, because if they would have had a, a race to the edge, they might have gotten it. Fourth and one, offense staying on the field for UCF. Wow, backed up in their own territory, too. They got him. Did they get him to move? Certainly there was contact. Offside, defense number two. It's a five-yard penalty and a first down. You've got to be smarter than that. There is no way UCF is snapping that football. Back there, coming out of their own end zone, you see number two, Preston Brown, jump all the way over the line. He's geeked up. George O'Leary likes what he sees. But as a defense, you've got to be smarter than that. You've got to realize the situation of the game, where you are on the field. There is no way UCF was going to snap that ball. They were going up there specifically to try to draw them offside. So the fourth and one hard count works for Central Florida. This is Storm Johnson, who is wrapped up maybe only a yard. Our FaceTime profile brought to you by Edward Jones. George O'Leary now in his 10th season at UCF. Old school, proudly so. He says he yelled at his grandkids recently because they weren't keeping score in a baseball game. Hey, he I'm said, with no, you win, you lose. You win division titles and conference titles. You learn things from this. I am with him on that one. I can't stand when they don't keep track of score in Little League and soccer games. Well, there always is a winner and a loser. On second and nine, complete. That's Storm Johnson out of the backfield. Stays in bounds. Close to the first down, about half a yard short. I think the big difference in this game is you're watching it unfold. Teddy Bridgewater, you see him, the comfort level in the pocket, not a lot of pressure. They tried to get after him, but he beat him with that touchdown pass. While there's Blake Bortles, a lot more pressure, a lot more guys in his face. They're knocking him around a little bit, but that's the kind of throws he's got to make. Find your check down, get it out, keep yourself in third down and shorts like they are right here. Third and one, they didn't get it on third down the last time. Had to go to fourth down. Storm Johnson has the first down this time in the Louisville territory. Takes it to the 45 as UCF crosses midfield. Storm Johnson with a rare inside run. George O'Leary and Charlie Taft, their offensive coordinator, said we really like him on the outside. One of the things we're working on with him is getting that power, those tough yards up the middle. That's exactly what Storm Johnson got right there. And now Junior from Loganville, Georgia, who was a huge recruit. The University of Miami got. Play fake on first and ten. Bortles pressured, throws incomplete, knocked away by Charles Gaines. But Blake Bortles has got to be careful on some of those plays that aren't there for him. That was very similar to the, the interception he threw in the end zone. Wasn't anything down the field, and they kind of just flipped it out there. You have to be more cautious than that because that ball was almost intercepted. The INT in the end zone was just his fourth throw this year. Two of those in the South Carolina loss. A three-point loss by Central Florida against South Carolina. Stand back, the true freshman. Driven down, no gain. It's third and long coming for Central Florida. Brandon Dunn, the big nose tackle from Louisville, leads the way for the Cardinals. This is the situation that UCF does not want to be in. And I go back to that first down pass where Blake Bortles kind of threw it carelessly down the field. Find a check down or run for a few yards. Then you don't set yourself behind right here in the third and ten. Pressure. Incomplete. Intended for Perryman. Marcus Smith was charging hard on Blake Bortles. Maybe forced the throw a little early. Yeah, but that was a good throw by Bortles. Delivered it 
a nice firm throw to the outside to Perriman, and you got to come up and make that catch on a road in the hostile environment. You're trying to battle your way back in this game. Got to make a catch for your quarterback. Louisville almost blocked the last punt. Houston wants this one to roll into the end zone. It is a touchback. And Teddy Bridgewater and the Louisville offense get the football back. 7 0 lead. Pacifico is brewed for those who follow their own path. That's Living Life Anchors Up. Eighth-ranked Louisville leading Central Florida 7-0 in the second quarter as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the conference championships from Muhammad Ali's hometown, Louisville, Kentucky. That is inside the Louisville weight room. Inspiration from the greatest. Homecoming, I'd dress up. Gonna look sharp. <laughs> Michael Dyer is now in at running back for Louisville. They'll rotate between Perry Brown and Dyer, the former Auburn standout. And here is Michael Dyer on first down. Picks up a few, takes a big pop from Clayton Gethers. Dyer, who was the offensive MVP of the BCS title game with Auburn in 2000. 11 was dismissed from both Auburn and Arkansas State. The Louisville coaching staff says he has towed the line with the Cardinals. Of course, everybody remembers Michael Dyer for that run that he had in the national championship game against Oregon. Looked like he was down, rolled over to the defender, and kept moving. Shifting tight ends. Quick drop. Quick completion. Copeland wrestled down by Jacoby Glenn, the redshirt freshman corner for UCF. It's a big play here for UCF. Third down, you know, George O'Leary talked about the early onslaught. Thus far, I'd say they're doing okay. I mean, they had the, the, the call that went their way when they got the touchback. They can hold them here and get the ball back in their offenses here. I would have to say George O'Leary would be pleased to this point. But they got to come up with a stop here on third and two. And Louisville's a perfect three for three on third downs. Rolling on third down. Bridgewater looking for a block. Throws it at the last second. Parker makes the grab right around the stick. Waiting for a signal. <laughs> Parker didn't know what hit him. I think he thought Teddy Bridgewater was going to run it, and it hit him in the belly like he wasn't ready for it. Watch Devontae Parker. Teddy Bridgewater, you think maybe he's going to run for it. Then he flips it at Parker, who's shocked by it. Hits him right in the chest. He's got no choice but to catch that one. So Bridgewater was out of bounds before the pass is completed. It's fourth and two. So it was Bridgewater who was out of bounds. And here's Ryan Johnson. This hit it a bit, but gets a good roll inside the 30-yard line for Ryan Johnson. So, Central Florida forces a three and out. They have withstood the early onslaught. Still Louisville 7-0. UCF football in a 7 0 game. Storm Johnson, nothing doing there. Big opportunity these next couple of weeks for the UCLA Bruins. I tell you what, everybody talks about Davion Clowney coming into this season, but Anthony Barr for UCLA is playing the best defense of anybody in the country right now. A big reason why UCLA is having so much success. They could make waves out there in the Pac 12, too. We're about to find out as their schedule gets a little bit tougher if they could be a team that could possibly knock off one of the teams from the North, because the Pac-12 North has been the mighty North 
up to this point. But man, UCLA has that feel of something special going on out there. The Bruins have a chance to play themselves not only a Pac-12 contention, but I would contend national championship contention with the next two weeks with uh, Stanford this week and then Oregon in Eugene next week. Now Stanford, a little bit of luster off after the loss versus Utah to snap their 13-game winning streak. And here is the upcoming UCLA schedule that includes the back-to-back -back weeks against Stanford and Oregon, both on the road. You're about to find out how good you are when you have that coming up on your schedule. Third down and four for Central Florida. Check down, Storm Johnson shakes his way for a first down and more. Tripped up inside the Louisville 45. Hakeem Smith makes what could have been a touchdown saving tackle. Yeah, Hakeem Smith caught him by the ankles there. But see Bortles surveying the field, makes the wise decision to check it down. Threw it shorter than the sticks, but trusted his athlete on the outside, Storm Johnson. This is the kind of moves he's got. This is why he was so heavily recruited right there. How'd you like to be on an island trying to tackle that guy? in open field. Storm Johnson gets a break after the big pickup. First and 10 nights. Stand back, the true freshman with Bortles. Stand back will take it. He spins out of a couple tackles to get six. Now, you mentioned heavily recruited. This is how heavily recruited. Storm Johnson, he's playing for the Knights after he originally went to Miami. Michael Dyer now playing for the Cardinals after Auburn, mm -hmm. of course, Marcus Lattimore is in the NFL. Pretty impressive trio right there. Storm Johnson. Out of Loganville, Georgia, the freshman year at Miami, and now he's a Knight. Play fake. Second and three, pass complete. First down, UCF. The short, controlled passing game for UCF has been most effective to this point in this game. And I like it because it takes some of the pressure off of Blake Bortles. He gets rid of the ball quickly, gets into his athlete's hands out in space on the outside. And that's what they did on the first drive of the game. They're getting back to it now. It really neutralizes the pass rush of Louisville because they've got some guys that can get after it on those edges. You talk about ways you can help your tackles. That's one of them. Get rid of the football quickly. Cardinals show pressure. There is a flag. Start offense, number 28. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's a first down. The other thing you can do to help your tackles, use a hard cadence, try to get them to jump off sides. But you cannot hurt yourself by a guy jumping off. 28 right next to him. As you saw him there, just running. Maybe he could have played it off like he was going in motion or something, but the officials were all over it. <laughs> just stop it for a challenge, right, right? right? Yeah. Communication in the just back. Play it here. off. <laughs> well, Storm Johnson after that last big catch and run to get UCF in the Louisville territory, still on the bench. Here comes pressure. Incomplete. Bortles hit as he throws by Calvin Pryor, the hard-hitting free safety who had the interception of Blake Bortles in the end zone on the opening UCF drive. I'll tell you, Vance Bedford, very creative in what he does with his blitzes. Showed like the house was coming. All he brought was one guy off the edge. But it was enough because the confusion up front, all the linemen were talking about the big guys that were going to have to block, created an unblocked defender coming free at the quarterback. Vance Bedford says, we are a pressure team. <laughs> From that look, I don't think he likes this defense he called up. I don't know. Time to throw for Blake Bortles. Now he has room to run, and Blake Bortles goes scrambling inside the 20. He has a first down. Knights, first and 10 from the 16. Great decision by Blake Bortles not to try to force a throw down the field, but seeing a lot of green grass he could run to and get it with his legs. That's a great quarterback battle we've got going on. Everybody knew about Teddy Bridgewater. Not enough people know 
about Blake Bortles, but they should. Both guys are finalists for the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. Unitas, a move along. That's Rennell Hall who takes the handoff and fumbles. Scooped up, recovered by Central Florida. Stand back, falls on top of the fumble by Rennell Hall. Where fortuitous bounce for UCF, bounce right up into Standback's hands. See, it happens so much when running backs try to get those extra yards. They got to secure that ball, but Standback right there at the right time. <laughs> trying to crawl his way into the end zone. Both of these teams are in the top 10 nationally in turnover margin, and yet we've seen two and almost three turnovers in the red zone. It's now first and goal for Central Florida. Stand back, touchdown! UCF is a PAT away from tying it against eighth-ranked Louisville. Just the second rushing touchdown of William Stanback's college career. That was a freshman. That was a big answer for UCF. It's kind of been a theme of this game early on. George O'Leary said, can we survive the early onslaught? I say they passed that test. Moffitt gets the PAT. We are tied 7-7 between UCF and 8th-ranked Louisville. It's a physical game so far. William Stanback taking it on the ground with the answer for UCF. This isn't just a beer. It's a lager. A medium-bodied, amber-colored, one-of-a-kind beer made from those bold enough to brew it for those bold enough to drink it. Tap into your inner eagle. Yingling traditional lager. Spread your wings. William Stanback from Hempstead, New York. Now, how did he get to Central Florida from Hempstead, New York? Doug Marone, now the head coach of the Buffalo Bills, then at Syracuse, told his former coach, George O'Leary. They were together at Syracuse when Marone was a player, and George O'Leary was an assistant coach at Syracuse. Doug Marone said, uh, George, I think you can use this guy. And William Stanback is a true freshman into the end zone. That's just his second touchdown, and he has tied it at seven. UCF has only one win over a ranked opponent in program history, 2009 against 13th ranked Houston. So the Knights trying to pull off what would be the biggest upset win in program history. Touchback this year, the American Athletic Conference. In a conference with Central Florida for the first time. This is just the second meeting between these two programs. The last was 1985 when Howard Schnellenberger was coaching the Cardinals. So Norris Perry, first down, handoff. Picks up seven, maybe eight, before Ozerites makes the stop. Talk about a momentum shift in this game. Since Louisville went in and fumbled at the goal line for the touchback, Central, for Central Florida has grasped the momentum of this game. Forced Louisville to a three and out. Then drove the length of the field. Very impressive response from UCF. Now can the Cardinals grab the momentum and the lead back? Sonoris Perry picks up the first down by just a bit. Sean Mag makes the stop. First and ten with Teddy Bridgewater and the Louisville Cardinals. Opening drive touchdown by Louisville. They were driving to go up 14 0, and then the Ryan Hubble fumble at the goal line changed the momentum of the game. Play action. Bridgewater completes minimal gain. That goes to Lamar Atkins, the fullback. Butter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, your Friday night crew. 
Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in Louisville. Sonoris Perry tries to get outside, dropped by Sean Mack. Third down coming. We check in with Allison. Coach Strong told us how even keeled Teddy Bridgewater is and that he never really shows emotion even when something's bothering him. I can tell you, I've never seen a quarterback as calm and as quiet as Bridgewater is. Every time he comes off the field, sits in the same spot, headphones on, chewing away at that bazooka bubble gum, which he keeps a couple extra pieces of stash in those appropriately colored <laughs> bubble gum socks. With a nod to Sports Illustrated. Out of the pistol, Bridgewater throwing on third and eight. It's caught by Eli Rogers. Hauls it in, stays in bounds. And the Cardinals roll inside the Central Florida 35. Eli Rogers, what great body control. Realizing where he is on the field, getting both feet in bounds. Didn't need them both, but had them both in bounds. And Bridgewater showing his ability to stretch the field vertically with that last pass. That's a catch on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. <laughs> Check down, incomplete. Just the second incompletion of the night by Teddy Bridgewater. I've gotten to watch Teddy Bridgewater kind of grow up. I saw him in high school at a high school combine. Saw him at his first meaningful action here at Louisville when he, he came in his first time playing. He had two delay of game penalties and threw a pick on the third down and long. And man, he has come such a long way from then. Really grown up and coming to his own. It's because of the work ethic, because of the time he's put in and into his craft. Spending the extra hours in the film room with his offensive coordinator, Sean Watson. On second and ten, Bridgewater completes again quick is dropped quickly mentioned the recruiting journey for Teddy Bridgewater out of Northwestern High School now Rose Murphy while she was battling breast cancer told her son Teddy Bridgewater go to Louisville Kentucky be your own man grow up in Louisville Kentucky and now Rose Murphy here to support her son Teddy and the undefeated Cardinals get the test For young people, education can be a guiding light through any circumstance, providing a path to achieve their dreams. That's why the Florida Lottery proudly supports the Bright Futures Scholarship Program, helping over 800,000 students attend college. And we want to continue creating brighter tomorrows. So if you're a Bright Futures Scholar or Florida educator, visit flalottery.com slash brightfutures to tell us how we can help you shine even further. Out of the timeout, third down and five for Louisville, trying to regain the lead and regain the momentum in a Friday night test that we expected from the Central Florida Knights. Bridgewater complete, converting again on third down. It's Damian Copeland. Louisville now five for six, converting on third down. And for the first time tonight, Louisville goes hurry up offense. On first and goal, Bridgewater steps up in the pocket, eludes the pressure, fires, incomplete, intended for Copeland. Bridgewater outside the pocket, you see him try to take the shot. Copeland would have had to make a circus catch on that one, but you just see the little things about Bridgewater. That ball, putting it where your receiver can get it or nobody. Maybe he makes a great catch, but obviously not behind him. You want to make a mistake there and down in the red zone. Copeland checks out of the game. Louisville playing with Devontae Parker, number nine, without Kai De La Cruz, number 12. And now Copeland on the sideline. To the end zone again. It is caught for a touchdown. And there's Devontae Parker again. And a flag down for a late hit on Teddy Bridgewater. First no foul. 
between the passer, number 47, on the defense. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Result of the play, touchdown. Second touchdown pass of the night for Teddy Bridgewater, 20th of the season. Teddy Bridgewater, Devontae Parker, he's got some weapons, just almost a back shoulder. Bridgewater purposely underthrew Parker there going through the end zone. If he would have if he would have put him on schedule, like throwing him open, I believe that ball would have been picked off. But because he threw him open towards his back shoulder, he's able to make that adjustment for the touchdown. The seventh touchdown grab of the year for Devontae Parker. Cardinals back on top. You're watching Night's Rewatch, presented by Dex Imaging. Do business better. Now, back to UCF football. Teddy Bridgewater in the undefeated eighth-ranked Louisville Cardinals back on top of UCF, 14-7. Now on the year, Teddy Bridgewater, 20 touchdown passes, only two interceptions thrown, and a touchdown lead. Kick it off from the 50 because of the... Roughing the passer penalty against UCF, assessed on the kickoff. So an easy touchback coming, UCF football at the 25-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. Watch this route by Devontae Parker. He's running a post route. Now, this ball is supposed to be completed over here at the post. Now, defender Sean Mag knows that as well. So he's going to defend this to the post. He's running the route for the receiver. He starts looking for the ball, and it's thrown right behind him. That's that back shoulder throw. You see it a lot of times on the sideline. And you see George O'Leary, and I, I feel bad for Sean Mag. He's like, hey, what can I do about that? I was in perfect position to cover it. Great adjustment to the ball. Great throw by Bridgewater. Tough to defend. 13 of the last 14 games, he's thrown two TDs. The last game that he had more interceptions than touchdowns, the 2011 Belk Bowl. Less than a minute to go. Blake Bortles completing to Justin Toops. Well, if you're UCF, you'd love to find a way to sneak the ball down into field goal territory and get some points before half. Sean Moffitt, the UCF kicker, who hit a 49-yarder last year. Motion on the line. That won't help. We know it's a false start, but against whom? False start, a, offense, options. number 63. It's a five-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, yeah he, he had some we, options. We have a 10-second <laughs> runoff. Central Florida, UCF has taken their timeout to avoid the 10-second runoff. Leaving UCF one timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. So a 30-second timeout. That's one timeout left for UCF. 14-7 to seven here with... Louisville and Central Florida, good one on Friday night. We anticipated the team. You said UCF could easily be a top 25 team, so with a, a close game, let's not get into this, hey, Louisville's not blowing anybody out. This is a good UCF team playing tough on the road. No, I think UCF doesn't get enough love because they're not in a power conference because they don't have the name brand that you would look for in a lot of those teams that are in the top 25. They went up to Penn State, beat them up there, they had uh, South Carolina up 10 nothing at halftime, lost that game by three against a very good team in South Carolina. Their resume is just as good as anybody in that top 25. And the, I think they've showed it tonight, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Louisville. Third down coming. Charlie Strong elects not to use a timeout on third down and potentially getting the football back towards the end of the half. So 
Two timeouts left for Louisville, one for Central Florida. And we are going to head to halftime in a one touchdown game between Central Florida and eighth ranked Louisville. 14 to 7, Cardinals on the Knights at the half. Teddy Bridgewater, a pair of first half touchdown passes. Send it out to Allison Williams. Thank you very much, Carter. Coach Strong, what's the sentiment on the sideline being up seven at the half? Well, we're up seven, and, uh, you know, we've been in a tight game before, so it's, it's we just got to continue to play and get some stops on uh, defense and offensively continue to move the ball. Defensively, how have you been able to get pressure on Bortles? Well, we're trying to rush four now. We was rushing three, and we weren't getting there with three, so we got to go with a four-man rush and let our two outside guys apply the pressure and then allow him to step up. What's going to be the key offensively in the second half? Well, offensively, we've been doing well. We're moving the ball. We just got to score when we get in the red zone. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Touchdown lead at the half for Charlie Strong and Louisville, 14 to seven. UCF, our Knights. Since 1970, UCF student athletes have represented Orlando with pride. Today, Masong Sandwiches honors them with a Knight Sandwich. Your choice of roast beef, turkey, or chicken with sauteed peppers, onions, and melted Swiss cheese. Three delicious combinations, one awesome sandwich. And for every Knight Sandwich sold, Masong Sandwiches will donate $1 to UCF Athletics. Come to the taste. Come to Masson. Famous sandwiches. Anytime breakfast. Serious coffee. seven-point game at the half on this Friday night. Both of those touchdowns for the eighth-ranked undefeated Louisville Cardinals. TD passes from Teddy Bridgewater. It is homecoming. Luke Hancock is the homecoming queen. Elizabeth Delaney, the homecoming queen. Luke Hancock, basketball player on the national champion Louisville Cardinal basketball team. So he's got some more hardware to go with that championship ring. Wearing his sunglasses at night. Mm. Should have some swag to rock that. You, that's that's right. Red, red, appropriately red sunglasses there for yeah. Hancock. Also, he's going to have to carry a big load for Louisville this season. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams back for the second half for Louisville and Central Florida on Friday night. Finally, a <laughs> touchback. Louisville gets it at the 25-yard line. So, UCF has kept it tight. It's a 14-7 game at the half. What do the Knights have to do to actually defeat Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals? Well, it's easier said than done, but they've got to get some pressure on Teddy Bridgewater. He's way too comfortable. He's 16-19 on the night, 205 yards. They've hit him a couple times. They need to hit him a lot more. Make him think about the pass rush. Disguise your blitzes. Disguise where you're coming from. Make it a lot more challenging for him. Because to, to this point, it's been too easy. He's just picking apart UCF secondary. Only three incompletions on the night for Teddy Bridgewater, and one of those was a ball you pointed out, Danny. He was throwing where the defense couldn't get it in the end zone. Dominique Brown takes the first down handoff. Keeps pushing for maybe nine. Our Timberland drive recap, last TD for Louisville. Well, Teddy Bridgewater, you talked about how flawless he's been tonight. Here he is finding Eli Rogers down the sideline. Great circus catch, keeping the feet in bounds. Here on a critical third down, finding Damian Copeland underneath. And then for the touchdown, we talked about the back shoulder throw to Devontae Parker. Pretty nice execution there on behalf of Teddy Bridgewater and company. Two TDs, zero INTs. It was the fumble by number 83, Ryan Hubble, at the goal line that cost Louisville a touchdown. Play fake on second and short, complete. That's Devontae Parker coming back from the shoulder injury that cost him almost all of the Temple game and all of last Thursday's win over Rutgers. He's a playmaker, too. I think that was vastly understated last week, the Thursday night game, when everybody was talking about Louisville not putting on a show, not coming out with a big win. I mean, I think tonight you've seen the type of player Devontae Parker is, and when he's not in that lineup, it makes a big difference. That is seventh TD grab in the first half tonight. Good 
Bridgewater hands off again. Dominique Brown shakes his way across midfield. First down, we check in with Allison Williams. George O'Leary was very succinct when I talked to him about what stood out in that first half. He said offensively, they've had opportunities. They just haven't taken advantage of them. And on defense, they gave up too many plays because they're playing the man, not the ball. George O'Leary now in his 10th season coaching UCF. Seven successful years at Georgia Tech. Goes the debacle at Notre Dame five days after getting the job. At least from that job and a couple NFL assistant stints as well. Plenty of time for Bridgewater to throw. Completes to Eli Rogers. It's Jacoby Glenn, the freshman cornerback, making the tackle immediately on Rogers. Six yards, second and four. The numbers all the year now for Teddy Bridgewater 20 touchdown passes against only two interceptions. 1900 passing yards through six and a half games. Out of the eye, Dominique Brown. Still rolling right around the sticks before Dunstan finally makes the stop. First down, Louisville. Uh, Lowe's never stop improving. Well, Teddy Bridgewater, you look at his development as a quarterback each year, consistently better. The touchdown interception ratio. You know, he went in there each offseason. He goes in with Sean Watson, his offensive coordinator. They sit down and they come up with a game plan. All right, what can we do better this offseason? And I don't think anybody in the country puts as more work in the film room on fundamentals than Teddy Bridgewater. And it shows in the results. Four seconds on the play clock. Here's Bridgewater rolling. Complete again to Eli Rogers again to the 30. Now, when Louisville offensive coordinator Sean Watson was an assistant at Miami of Ohio, his neighbor was Weeb Eubank, the Hall of Fame coach of the Baltimore Colts and the New York Jets. Eubank stressed to Watson, the key to coaching quarterback, said, make sure they know the why. So, like, Weeb Eubank and Paul Brown, Watson teaches his quarterbacks defenses and coverages first then they learn the offense Brown takes the toss flag down as Dominic Brown picks up a first down to the 26 we'll check the flag Number seven, ten-yard penalty, second down. He'll drive a coach nuts on the outside, Damian Copeland. <laughs> there he is right there. See his hand up underneath the jersey. And that'll drive a coach nuts. That's a little ticky-tacky call right there. But when you get a guy on the outside, stalling the drive. So instead of first down at the 26, back it up to the 40-yard line. Second down and 14 after the hold. Long drop for Bridgewater. Over the middle, Dominique Brown sneaking out of the backfield and delivering a blow to Troy Gray. Dominique Brown liking the contact there. Like you said, Carter, delivering the ball. The, the blow just going back to Sean Watson and the offensive coordinator teaching the why that is so valuable in the communication process when Bridgewater comes over to the sideline he can go offer up things solutions to what they're doing because he knows why they're running certain plays what are man beaters what are two you know two deep beaters there are different reasons why you run plays and it's such a help to have that in the pass game on third down Brown shaking his way to the 20 yard line for Louisville. One more note on the Louisville offensive coordinator, Sean Watson. I asked him, all right, if you were an NFL general manager turning over every stone about Teddy Bridgewater before you used the number one or a top five pick on Teddy Bridgewater, 
said, what concerns would you have? Sean Watson said, I would have none about Teddy Bridgewater. His character, his work ethic, his football IQ, all elite. Pistol on first down, Brown again. Touchdown, Louisville. This one on the ground from Dominique Brown. Charlie Strong, you gotta love the way Louisville came out after halftime. That's a statement drive right there. Grasping control of this game, physically getting it done on the ground. Really impressed with Dominique Brown, too, with his running style. For all the talk from us and everybody else about Teddy Bridgewater and the touchdown passes, it is a Louisville team that wants to pound it. Dominique Brown pounds it all the way into the end zone. A two-touchdown lead for eighth-ranked Louisville. At Wendy's, we got you with open drive throughs and delivery. So get a biggie bag loaded with a bacon double stack and all this for just five bucks. It's a big deal at a small price. Drive through Wendy's or get one delivered today. Two passing touchdowns for Teddy Bridgewater and now Dominique Brown, one of the three tailbacks that Louisville utilizes in the end zone for his third rushing touchdown of the year on the Dr. Pepper Road to the Championships. 21-7, eighth ranked Louisville on Central Florida in the first and only American Athletic Conference meeting between these two. John Wallace's kickoff taken around the 20. That's stand back. Across the 30, and that's it. Well, we mentioned earlier, uh, Weeb Eubank transitions us right to Johnny Unitas before he played. The Colts was a Louisville Cardinal. Johnny Unitas actually played linebacker as well as quarterback for the Cards. He was drafted and released by the Steelers, his hometown team, Pittsburgh, and then went on to become one of the all-time greats of the Baltimore Colts. And that statue is what the Louisville team runs out of the locker room and onto the field right past Johnny Unitas. First and ten, handoff to Storm Johnson with UCF. Trailing now by two touchdowns. The interception on the first UCF drive. The lone touchdown drive, 71, and then the end of the half. For Georgia O'Leary's Knights. It's been a little inconsistent. I think that's got to be frustrating for Georgia O'Leary as they watch UCF. They've had their moments when they've executed nicely. They've been able to move the ball, and they've made a couple key mistakes. Heavy pressure on second and seven. Storm Johnson runs through the run blitz but gets to the 40. It's good to see Storm Johnson back in the game. Took a big hit in the first half. Was on the sidelines for a while, but they need him. I mean, he's a focal point of this offense. He's an impact player for their run game. And this is critical because they want to be in these types of situations. They feel like they can have success when it's third and three or less. Intended for Tukes. James Burgess supplies the pressure to force fourth down for the Knights. UCF ran the almost exact same play earlier in Bortles found Storm Johnson out in the flat. That time Louisville was all over it, draped all over Storm Johnson. Bortles tried to come back to his tight end. Pretty good coverage by Louisville. Louisville won the opening coin toss and deferred, so. Caleb Houston, loose football, scooped up by the Cardinals. 
sprinting in for a Cardinal touchdown is the true freshman, James Quick. A special teams blunder makes it a three touchdown lead for the Cardinals. The red shirt freshman punter bobbles it, fumbles it, and the true freshman from Louisville's Trinity High School has his first TD as a Cardinal. And it comes on special teams. Now a substitution issue here for Louisville prior to the PAT. Still no timeout called. Trying to figure out what's going on. I guess everything's okay. Eventually, we'll have a PAT kick from John Wallace. <laughs> 14 straight by Louisville to begin the third quarter. It's hard enough to win on the road, but you cannot make mistakes like this. Caleb Houston puts it on the ground. Louisville makes him pay. The bill on Friday night, it's turned up. And we'll rise up. I like the waves, we'll rise up. In spite of the ache, we'll rise up. And we'll do it a thousand times again. You, you, you. His kickoff after the special teams touchdown. Stand back, brings it to the 25 yard line. Well, there's a reason why everybody's fired up on Friday night. Not atmosphere. just the football team, but I mean, DJ K Dog, this is, he's making his preparations as well. Yeah, he was getting loose before the game, spinning a little bit. He's had the crowd hyped all night, though. I wonder how many schools have a live DJ. Take care of their stadium sound. I think this might be the only one. It's the first one that we have come across, I believe, on the on the Friday night tour. It might be on to something. And the football team's undefeated. Coincidence? Uh, first and ten for Blake Bortles and UCF. Johnson trying to run away from that hounding Louisville defense. Preston Brown makes the stop. Now the big one on Saturday night in the ACC, the top five matchup, the first top five matchup, potential national championship and Heisman implications, Jameis Winston, Taj Boyd, ABC 8 Eastern. Pretty incredible, Jameis Winston putting up better numbers than Johnny Manziel put up last season as Heisman winning campaign as a freshman as well. Really been remarkable, the success he's had so early. I thought he'd be good, I didn't know he'd be this good. Breaking records. And Florida State. Bortles throwing on second down. That's complete. Perriman dropped as soon as he grabs it from Terrell Floyd, giving us a chance to check in on Danny's QB stock report. And will you please explain why James Franklin is on this list <laughs> ahead of Johnny Manziel, hey. Teddy Bridgewater? He had a signature win for Missouri going into Athens, knocking off Georgia. But you better sell his stock now while it's hot because obviously he's not going to be able to play much longer as he's Hurt with that shoulder. Hate seeing that happen for Missouri, too. Jameis Winston down because he had the bye week. Marcus Mariota up at the top because of the performance he had against Washington. There's a reason behind my madness, Carter. It is madness. Blake Bortles heaving on third and three. That's caught. Brashad Perryman holds it in. At the 35, giving you 
UCF life. That was reminiscent of the play that Eli Rogers made for Louisville. How about this one? Again, gets the foot in bounds. Catch, one foot. I've seen a lot of circus catches tonight. That one goes for 32. And... Previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field is a catch. If it stands, would be the first completion of over 15 yards tonight for UCF. Now the question, will it stand? At Papa John's, we want you to know that from our 450 degree oven to box to you, it's our policy that your pizza is never touched once it comes out of the oven. And we're taking extra steps like no contact delivery to ensure it. You're watching Night's Rewatch, presented by Dex Imaging. Do business better. Now back to UCF football. After further review, this was confirmed as a catch for Brashad Perryman. Yeah, you see the one, the left foot down, had possession in there, all the way, kept possession all the way through. And just when UCF needed it, too. Knights trailing by three touchdowns after 14 unanswered for Louisville here in the third. Central Florida trying to get back in it. Bortles hands off to Storm Johnson. Good block on the outside. Johnson cuts it back inside the 10. It will be first and goal UCF. Rennell Hall springs Storm Johnson. Well, Storm Johnson directing traffic while he's toting the rock. Guiding his blockers on the outside, setting them up. Watch him here at ground level. To the point, you get that guy, I'll take care of the rest. Hall took out two defenders, but he paid a price because he's slow getting up and headed back to the UCF sideline. with that shoulder. He's UCF's leading receiver on the bench. For first and goal. Under six to go in the third. Only one touchdown in the three red zone trips for UCF. Ball is complete. Jeff Godfrey. Senior pushing, but Akeem Smith makes a stop second in goal. And the Knights need to re-grab some momentum. After 14 nothing, Louisville here in the third so far. Storm Johnson, touchdown, UCF. First score of the second half for Central Florida. They pulled back within two touchdowns, 4.50 to go in the third. That was a big answer for UCF, showing some fight. Keeping this game competitive, giving themselves a chance. Because it looked like it was going to get out of hand for a while. Louisville had allowed only one rushing touchdown in the first six games. Storm Johnson's TD gives UCF two rushing touchdowns tonight. They're back in it. Hi, I'm Danny White with UCF Athletics. We want you to show your UCF pride with the new UCF plate. Please ask for the new UCF license plate at your county tax collector's office and night your ride.
We had a one touchdown game at the half. It's a two touchdown game now after UCF gets in the end zone. Storm Johnson, second rushing touchdown of the night for the Knights. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. It's brought out by Charles Gaines. He shouldn't have brought it out. It's to the 13. Hashtag Friday Focus, a return trip to Clemson. Welcome back game day to get it started for the ACC matchup between Clemson and Florida State. Lee Corso and the gang getting ready for game day. Chris Desmond and Kirk Herbstreet. College game day built by the Home Depot from Clemson. Tomorrow, 9 a.m., bald man on campus has an incredible story of Nick O'Leary, the grandson of Jack Nicholas. And the punt Ruski in that Florida State Clemson game, 1988, plus more on Brett Humbler. Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals from inside their 15. Samoris Perry pushing. Well, of course, we'll see Coach Corso and see which of the headgear he puts on with the head coach here at Louisville from 69 to 72. Took the Cardinals to just their second bowl. 1970, they went to the Pasadena Bowl. Tied Long Beach State 24 all. Pulling for those chops to come back at some point for Coach Corso. I like too. those chops. They look pretty good. Coach Corso went from here to Indiana. That's Perry. Fumble. UCF recovers. 353 to go in the third. And the Knights down by two touchdowns. Have it at the Louisville 15. Perry fumbles. Sean Mag recovers. Wow, good left hand. You see the left hand by the UCF defender coming up on that tackle. Great strip. Looks like it was Clayton Gethers who strips it. And now let's see if UCF can capitalize, because basically UCF spotted Louisville seven points by the drop punt, picked up, scooped, and scored. See if they can trade off and get one off a turnover. Motion. Louisville had only three fumbles lost in the first six games, two tonight. Ball start, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. How much of these penalties by the UCF offensive line is because of the pressure the Louisville D puts on you? I think it definitely has something to do with it. The offensive line gets antsy. It's also the crowd noise in this situation. But really, I mean, the whole left side of the line moved. I don't know if it was a miscommunication, maybe it was a quick count, but he had motion. Some sort of miscommunication at the line of scrimmage. I've seen a couple of those tonight for UCF. Bortles sets up the screen. This is Storm Johnson again. Johnson reverses field and takes it in for a touchdown. And we're back to a one-score game in Louisville. The Cardinal fumble turns into a UCF touchdown. The Knights come storming back in the third. What a run by Storm Johnson, too. That play was de not designed to go all the way back across the field. Just great individual effort. You can see why he's got the skills to be one time top three running back in the country coming out of high school. Sean Moffitt's PAT makes it 28 21. Two touchdowns for both UCF and Louisville here in the third quarter. The Cardinals got the fumble on the punt. 
Harry fumbles it, gives it right back to the Watch Knights. the screen. Watch the center and the right guard. Watch them. Just follow them throughout the play because this screen is designed to go to the left. It's a throwback screen. But watch them stay after blocks down the field. Two nice blocks there. And then Storm Johnson takes it opposite field and does the rest on his own. Great play call, great execution in that situation. Man, really impressed by Storm Johnson, the moves he put on that run. Storm Johnson has two touchdowns in a minute 10. One rushing, one receiving on the screen. Louisville had the two touchdowns in a minute 22 seconds. And then UCF comes back with two TDs in a minute 10. And Storm Johnson exploding in the second half. A UCF team was only beaten a ranked opponent once in program history. That was Houston in 2009 when Houston was ranked number 13 in a Conference USA matchup. It'll be the biggest upset win in UCF history if they can hand Louisville their first loss in 2013. Robert Clark from near the goal line. To the 15, we check with Allison Williams. And Carter, the shift in momentum is palpable on the sidelines. Before that first UCF touchdown in the second half, the defense was completely dejected, and defensive coordinator Jim Fleming was asking his guys, are you going to fight or are you going to fold? Well, they fought, and now on the Louisville sideline, a completely different feel. Players kind of getting after one another. Now you can sense the frustration on this sideline. And you factor in for Louisville, they have that number eight next to their name, but the weaker strength of schedule, the non-power conference, all eyes on the Cardinals. They won by two touchdowns last Thursday. We're still jumped in the polls. 14th Street for Central Florida to get back in it. Right back to the air for Teddy Bridgewater. Looked like Parker slipped a bit. They have cost him the first down. And credit to UCF, though. I mean, it was 28-7 not that long ago. You're thinking the route is on. The crowd was rocking. We're talking about the DJ, what a great environment it is. UCF took that punch, and they countered pretty impressively. George O'Leary's got to be thrilled with the effort his team is putting forth. Now if this defense can come out with a stop, get the ball back, all of a sudden they've got this momentum. Dominique Brown is now in running back for Louisville. Cardinals rotate backs throughout the night. And this is Brown slipping through that UCF deep to get to the 31. Play action. Bridgewater heaves it long for Copeland. Incomplete as Damian Copeland laid out for it at the 25. Jacoby Glenn in coverage. Bridgewater showcasing some of the arm strength on the run down the field to Copeland. Put it right there in his hands somewhere. You got to find out a way to make that catch. And that's Teddy Bridgewater's first incompletion in over 15 passes on a shot play, too, down the field. Been so efficient tonight. Night show pressure. Here they come. Bridgewater tipped and incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions make it third and ten. So that was the first deep ball that Bridgewater has missed on tonight. Uh, he's been pretty close to flawless on the evening. He's got so many weapons with, to work with. He spreads it around nicely to the different targets. and makes great decisions. Knows when to take a shot. Knows when to check it down. Louisville's been terrific on third down, but they've been third and short. This is third and ten. With the Knights showing pressure. Bring four. Here comes Plummer to sack Teddy Bridgewater back at the 16-yard line. Terrence Plummer had the tip on second down, and then he gets the sack on third down with a little help from Dion Green, who is still down on the field. Back-to-back, -back, tremendous plays from the junior middle linebacker, Terrence Plummer, who had a couple of picks in the last game for UCF against Memphis, road win.
And that's Dion Green who's down on the ground. It's Terrence Plummer, the linebacker. Watch him in here kind of walking around both linebackers. Then he does come on the blitz, just finds his way inside, gets enough of the jersey. That's a pretty good strength right there to grab Bridgewater by the jersey and bring him down. What a huge sack at the perfect time for UCF. Plummer had the big hit in the South Carolina game that knocked Connor Shaw out of the game. And that three-point loss to South Carolina. And Plummer has the tip ball, gets the sack on Bridgewater. Jim Fleming, their defense coordinator, said he's active. I would say yes. that's a very accurate assessment of Terrence Plummer at the middle linebacker position for UCF. So Green, probably the best pass rusher for UCF, to the sideline. And now Central Florida will get the football back. Less than two minutes to go in the third, and it's a one-score game. Fair catch called for. And grabbed by Jeff Godfrey. So it will be Central Florida football from right around the 45. A minute 43 to go in the third. What was a three touchdown lead for Louisville is down to one. Crowd slowly starting to create a little noise realizing hey this once was they thought was going to be a blowout the celebration was starting now they're saying hey we need to create some crowd noise. Bortles pulls it, throws complete. That's when El Hall, who left the last series for UCF after throwing the big block, he's the leading receiver for the Knights. Back in there to make the grab, pick up the first down. That play right there, that little zone read option look from Bortles, a play that UCF had a lot of success with in the first half. Bortles kind of presses the edge, forces the defender to come up and take him, and then he just flips it to the outside. Storm Johnson on the UCF sideline for now. We have both of the last touchdowns for UCF on a run and a screen pass. So it's Stanback, the true freshman, shaking outside. William Stanback knocked out of bounds around the 10 by Hakeem Smith. And UCF has absolutely captured the momentum of this game by playing some smash mouth football. Good blocking up front. Stanback bounces it to the outside. Let's his speed take over, watch him deliver a blow at the end of that. But UCF, to their credit, they have gotten physical, they've come up and they've hit Louisville in the mouth and fought their way back into this game. First and 10 from the Louisville 12. Stand back again, picking his way inside the five touchdown, Central Florida. And UCF is a PAT away from tying it. After trailing by three touchdowns in the third, the Knights are on the verge of tying it up with 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. The defense steps it up on Teddy Bridgewater. The offense. Gets into the end zone again, and we are even at 28. Wow, credit to the UCF offensive line. Watch the pulling center and pulling guard. Watch them come out. Watch the action. Watch the blocks on the outside that they get. Putting both Louisville defenders out of the play. Credit to this UCF line. It's a veteran group of guys. Man, that's perfect textbook. Power running game right there by UCF. Joey Grant and Justin McCray pulling. Jordan McCray gives a little help as well. An explosive third quarter, 147 yards. Three straight touchdowns for UCF. And all eyes on number eight Louisville, the undefeated record. 
Can they run through 2013 undefeated? How high can they climb? Well, all of that is on hold right now as they are locked in a tie game with UCF. 30 seconds to go in the third. You said from the get-go, Danny, this is a Central Florida team. Easily could be top 25. This is not one of the weaker opponents on the Louisville schedule. This no. is one of the best, maybe the best. This is probably their best test of the season right here. I said it earlier, UCF's got the resume where they could easily be a top 25 team, but because they're not a name brand or they don't play in a power conference, they don't get the respect. Well, if they win this one tonight in Louisville, UCF will be ranked, no question about it. So UCF had the big win at Penn State, 34-31, and backed that up with a near upset. The South Carolina had to win a wacky win on the road at Memphis to get their first conference win. And trust me, George O'Leary has used all the talk about Louisville coming into this game saying, hey, nobody knows about you guys. Nobody respects what you guys are accomplishing. And boy, they're playing like it, like they have a chip on their shoulder tonight. But credit to them for keeping their composure when they were down 28 to 7. And it looked like the route was on for Louisville. They had bounced back. It punched Louisville right back in the mouth. Now, can Teddy Bridgewater and the Louisville Cardinals respond? After 21 straight from UCF to tie it. Dominique Brown has the first down carry. Only one or two there. Plummer leads the way again with Thomas Niles, E.J. Dunstan. As we roll towards the fourth. And Louisville, they're taking it to the third, uh, fourth quarter, but just a little bit lethargic. I mean, uh, you heard Allison say they're getting frustrated on the sideline. They need to get back into this game in a hurry. UCF got back into this game in a hurry. They were down 28-7. And then two touchdowns in a minute 10 from the junior Storm Johnson. It was a dance party for Louisville early. Now on Friday night, it's the Knights having fun in Louisville, Kentucky. Addition Financial can't help Olivia's mom make a perfect unicorn cake. But for smart financing, money management, and college savings, count us in. Tied at 28 as we go to the fourth quarter in Louisville. A wild third quarter. 21 straight from Central Florida after back-to-back -to -back touchdowns by Louisville extended the lead to 28-7. So we go to the fourth on Friday night. Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals. Locked in a tight one in this American Athletic Conference matchup. To throw on second and nine. First down. Devontae Parker makes the grab. This is the point of the game where you're Teddy Bridgewater. You have to take over. You're the face of your program. Charlie Strong said, we go as Teddy Bridgewater goes. He's got to get in that huddle. Have everyone look him right in the eye and say, hey, it's on me. Here we go. Had dramatic fourth quarter wins a year ago against South Florida, against Rutgers, against Cincinnati in overtime on a Friday night. Now we're even at 28. Screen to the outside. Eli Rogers will check in with Allison. Well, Carter, Danny, these are the moments Teddy Bridgewater lives for. On his bracelet that he wears during every game is the acronym GUMP. It stands for Great Under Major Pressure. And that is what he tries to be each and every time he takes the field. They love the acronyms around the world. Yes, they do. Including Teddy. Football coaches in general love the acronyms. Mm -hmm. Tight end shift on second down and six. Bridgewater hands off to Dominique Brown, is dropped in the backfield. Miles Pace and Sean Mag get the tackle for loss to make it third down and long. But UCF has picked up the intensity level, and Louisville has not matched them to this point. 
Teddy Bridgewater, see him wearing the towel there. Went and snagged it after that last play. If you recall last week on Thursday night, had a couple really bad throws that just got away from him. And it was because he was his center sweating so much he would get the ball, would be wet. You gotta wonder if that's become an issue late in this game as everybody's starting to sweat a little bit more and it's starting to accumulate. Bridgewater is five for five on third down. First incompletion on third down. Jacoby Glenn, the red shirt freshman corner, knocks it away from Damian Copeland. So the struggles continue for Louisville. You see Bridgewater rifles one in there, but pretty good coverage by Jacoby Glenn. The crowd here wanting to call. You see his left hand, he keeps it off the body. That's actually pretty good from the defensive back. Not having that left hand draped on the receiver. How about that from the freshman cornerback? Ryan Johnson punts it away. Godfrey is blown up as he grabs it at the 30. <laughs> Preston Brown, the middle linebacker, drills Godfrey. But it's UCF football with a chance to take the lead at eighth ranked Louisville. At Chick-fil-A, we may be about the little things, but for us, community is a big thing. It brings out the best in us all, even in times as uncertain as these. While we can't have the pleasure of serving you in our dining areas, we're still here for you with delivery, drive through and mobile order where possible in compliance with state and local regulations. Order through the Chick-fil-A app or our delivery partners, and we'll see you soon. In the meantime, let's all take good care of each other. In the fourth quarter, 28-all between UCF and Louisville as we continue the Dr. Pepper Road to the Conference Championship. This is the American Athletic Conference matchup between the Cardinals and the Knights. Louisville tied 28, the only team in the FBS that has not trailed this season. It's October 18th, and Louisville has yet to be behind in a game this season. The Knights have it first and ten with a chance to take the lead on eighth-ranked undefeated Louisville. Storm Johnson back in at running back to pick up seven. The conventional wisdom about the American Athletic Conference, they have a BCS bid this year. That's the old Big East BCS bid. Last year, the BCS, everybody just gave Louisville a pass to the BCS. Question was, are they going to make it to the championship game? But if Central Florida, Houston, or anybody else could rise up, they could be going to a BCS bowl game. Storm Johnson again, pushing to the 45, moving the chains. Man, how impressive has Storm Johnson been in this second half? I mean, throughout the game, he's been impressive, but man, he has taken over for UCF offensively, the workhorse of their offense. A nice combination, too, with William Stanback behind him to give him a blow. Louisville crowd's trying to get up. They're trying to make it a challenge for UCF. Cardinals blitz on first down. Bortles throws complete to the outside. That's Hall. He gets eight. Well, there's another look at that little zone, zone read action from the backfield. Flip it out to the guy in the flat. They've got it set up perfectly. If they want to take the shot down the field, they've thrown that play so many times tonight. They've set it up perfectly where Blake Bortles could pull up and flip it down the field for a huge play for UCF. He's been solid in the second half after the INT on the opening drive by UCF in the end zone. Johnson right through the Louisville D, rolling to the 31. Poor Akeem Smith finally stops him. Good job by the offensive line up front. Storm Johnson makes one guy miss. That was number 91, Marcus Smith, juked him, took it to the second level. Storm Johnson has the rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown. He had two TDs in a minute 10.
stand back at tailback. Tackled by Preston Brown. Picks up maybe two on first down. Mentioned a couple of times the only win that Central Florida has over a ranked opponent against 13th ranked Houston in 2009. So UCF had the win at Penn State. Huge win for the program. This would be the biggest win in UCF program history. Yeah, George O'Leary made that clear coming into this game. He said this is the biggest game we've ever had as a program. And what an opportunity. And they have lived up to the challenge here tonight. Right around Sean Moffitt's field goal range. Stand back to the 20. First down UCF from the Louisville 20. The thing that's impressed me the most is UCF getting it done on the ground. There is nothing more demoralizing for a defense than to get run on. And that's what UCF has done, especially in the second half with Storm Johnson, Williams stand back, an offensive line that's been really impressive tonight. Fifth red zone trip for UCF. They're three out of four, getting touchdowns inside the Louisville 20. Stand back drop, minimal gain, Lorenzo Molden on the stop. Now can the Knights punch it in or get the field goal from Moffitt to take the lead for the first time this year against the Louisville Cardinals? Louisville's undefeated season on the line in the fourth quarter. Storm Johnson again. It's going to be third down as Preston Brown makes the stop. Third down and seven, critical to Louisville's chances of an undefeated season and an opportunity to possibly play for a national championship. Bortles, pressure. Blake Bortles dumps it out of bounds. There's a flag down. It's holding against UCF, which impacts Sean Moffitt. Holding. Offense, number 63. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Decline the penalty Ooh, to make it fourth down. It would have been third down again. Charlie Strong declines the penalty. Wow. I'm surprised because that is a much bigger difference for a field goal kicker. If you would have moved him back, would have been a much tougher field goal. So decline the holding penalty. It would have been third down, but a 10-yard penalty from the holding. Now it's Sean Moffitt. He's six for six on the season. The junior from Orlando from 34. And for the first time in 2013, the Louisville Cardinals trail. 7.36 to go in the fourth quarter. And Central Florida has come from down 28-7 in the second half to lead eighth-ranked Louisville. I was diagnosed with stage 3C inflammatory breast cancer. I started reading about it and it was extremely scary because my husband and I just had a baby. My doctor at Florida Cancer Specialist was wonderful with everything. He knew that I didn't have that time that I needed to be taken care of right away. Now I get to look forward to the future and it gives me a lot of hope that I'm going to be there to watch my daughter grow up. Eighth-ranked Louisville was ready to celebrate a 7-0 start to the season. They were up 28-7 in the third quarter, but it's UCF on top by three. What a terrific kick by Sean Moffitt because of the bobbled hold by Caleb Houston. And Caleb Houston, who had dropped the punt earlier in the game that Louisville scooped and scored off of. But credit to Sean Moffitt for keeping that head down. 
Our kicking expert, Mike Black, the coaching advice there for the kicker. Well done. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams, your Friday night crew from Central Florida storming back on the road. Louisville trails for the first time in 2013. Return to the 21-yard line by Sonoris Perry. Hashtag Friday Focus getting you ready for the uh, full day on Saturday. Auburn against seventh-ranked Texas A&M. And Johnny Manziel, Northwestern, is at Minnesota. Missouri and Florida in a huge one. Missouri without James Franklin for the rest of the year at quarterback. Notre Dame versus USC. Unranked Notre Dame against unranked USC, which uh, a couple of four and two teams going trying to salvage their season. And Notre Dame, USC. Now you've been bold on Auburn. Yes. That Auburn Texas A&M game is attractive. Are you, you going to get bold on that I've one? I've been saying since July they're going to wreck somebody's season. I don't think it's going to be this okay. week, but Auburn's saving it. I'm, I'm looking for Georgia, <laughs> potentially Alabama in the Iron Bowl. There was a holding penalty against Louisville on the return, so the Cardinals are backed up. Teddy Bridgewater and Louisville trailing for the first time this season. Leg to the outside to Eli Rogers to the 19. Again, if you're Teddy Bridgewater, you've got to see this as an opportunity. An opportunity to put this team on your shoulders, to shine. Talk about Heisman moments. This presents an opportunity for him on a national stage to make a big statement. Louisville last Thursday won by two touchdowns and were passed in the polls by LSU and Texas A&M. And now... Trying to prove themselves again in a test against Central Florida. Bridgewater complete. That's Gerald Christian, the junior tight end, Florida transfer to the 45. UCF defensively has done a great job taking away the run game and forcing Louisville to be one dimensional. That was their goal coming into the game. And Teddy Bridgewater's put up some big numbers, but for the most part, they've contained Louisville. Six twenty-three to go in a Louisville offense that is capable of draining a lot of time off the clock. With a ball control drive in the fourth. Dominique Brown stood up on first down. E.J. Dunstan on the stop. Our look of the leader brought to you by the United States Army. At Charlie Strong, he was actually four times an assistant coach at the University of Florida, including under Ron Zook and Urban Meyer, worked for Coach Holtz. Coach Spurrier, great recruiter. He didn't get Danny Connell. <laughs> That's though. right. He recruited me out of high school, had many phone conversations with him. He's an outstanding coach, outstanding individual, and a great leader for this program at Louisville. Screen, Copeland. Out of bounds at the 50. This is third down coming up. It will be third down and five yards for Louisville. Rolling near five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. You talked about Louisville being able to utilize some clock. They have to be careful if they give it back to UCF. The ground game that they have had working, they could take some time off the clock too. So every third down becomes that much more important. Both teams full complement of timeouts. Bridgewater. Incomplete on third and five. It was nearly picked by Jacoby Glenn. Bridgewater, who had been almost perfect on third down, and immediately he and the offense say, go for it, go for it. Charlie Strong says, fourth and five, offense stays on the field. I think it's because of the success that UCF has had running the football. They might not get another opportunity. Going for it for only the second time on fourth down this year. The undefeated season in the balance on fourth down. Bridgewater. Incomplete. Knocked away. Intended for Devontae Parker, but here's a flag. 
Ozerites there in coverage on Devontae Parker. Flag thrown on fourth and five. George O'Leary strongly disagrees. Pass interference. Defense, number 38. 15 yards in the previous spot. First down. Bridgewater saw press coverage on the outside. There's number 38, Ozerites. That right hand wrapped around that waist. See it draped around the backside of him. I do think he had contact before that football got there. So Louisville with a huge call that goes their way. Pass interference on fourth down. 4.41 to go. Cardinals down by three. They've got it from the 35. So from here, if you're thinking field goal, it would be 52 yards. Trying to work to give John Wallace a better chance to tie it if it comes to that. Obviously, the Cardinals would rather get in the end zone to regain the lead. Flag on first down. Couple of them. Holding. Offense. Number 53. 10-yard penalty. First down. Here's Jordan Ozerites, that pass interference call on the fourth down and five. See his right hand, he's got it draped right there. You can see it before the ball arrives to the receiver. You've got to stay off the receiver. In worst case, didn't make a play on the football. His eyes never came back around. So good call by the officials. Followed by a hold on Jake Smith to make it first and 20. Back out to the 45, outside of field goal range. Bridgewater check down, it is incomplete. Incomplete. Dominique Brown, the intended receiver. Sports Center right now on ESPN2 with an update on the NLCS. Getting a set for the full weekend of football. Sports Center follows us here on ESPN. Eighth ranked undefeated Louisville, trailing by three. UCF trying to end the undefeated season championship aspirations of the Louisville Cardinals. On second and 20 complete. That's Michael Lee Harris to the 30. Big time throw from Teddy Bridgewater. Throw that on a frozen rope to Michael Lee Harris across the middle. And Harris had some room. Good tackle by UCF to prevent the huge play. And every third down at this situation, time running out becomes that much more critical. It would be a 47-yard field goal attempt from here. Bridgewater pressured. He will scramble, toss, complete. First down, Dominique Brown makes the grab and takes it to the 15. And there's the improvisational Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, you got to love that from Teddy Bridgewater. Scrambles outside of the pocket. Watch the backhanded flip out to the back in the flat. Gets the extra yards. Timeout UCF. Can Louisville put it in the end zone and keep the undefeated season alive? Guess what I just did? I got a night pass. Night pass? Yeah, ePass is now offering night fans UCF branded toll stickers. See for yourself my windshield now sports night black and gold. They'll certainly see you coming, but does night pass work on all toll roads in Florida? Yes, it's accepted on all toll roads in Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina. Go night pass. It's how nights travel. Score big and save more with night pass. Go to getnightpass.com. Getnightpass.com. Hey, night fans. What's on your windshield? John Wallace was the hero on that Friday night. Also has a game-winning kick versus Rutgers last year. Wallace potentially will have a chance to tie it. But Bridgewater and the Cardinals want to get in the end zone to grab the lead. First and ten. Bridgewater hands off. Dominique Brown shaking his way all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Louisville. Cardinals on top. The undefeated 
season lives on. At least for now. Dominique Brown, did he tiptoe his way on the sideline? Anything out of bounds? No, nope. clearly inbounds for the score for Louisville. Dominique Brown, the junior who missed all of 2012 medical redshirt. Back in a Cardinal uniform in 2013, and he has the biggest touchdown yet in 2013 for eighth ranked Louisville. And we'll rise up. I like the waves. We'll rise up. In spite of the ache, we'll rise up. And we'll do it a thousand times again. You, 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 you. The Cardinal fans are ecstatic for now. Dominique Brown's touchdown has given Louisville a 35-31 lead with three minutes to go. But UCF will have a chance to silence this crowd. Three minutes to go, two timeouts for the UCF Knights. Wallace's kickoff goes for a touchback. The UCF football to 25. Blake Bortles, the junior, grew up in Oviedo, Florida, near Orlando, grew up a UCF fan. Went to watch the Knights growing up. Other programs wanted him to play tight end. George O'Leary and UCF gave him a chance to be a quarterback. And now Blake Bortles has a chance to lead what would be the biggest drive in the UCF program history. And he's been in big situations before. He's been at Penn State, helped his team to a win there. He's been in hostile environments. This is where his calm, quiet demeanor can really help him. He's not going to be distracted by all the noise and hostility around him. Storm Johnson, nothing. Brandon Dunn leads the way with James Burgess. Bortles finds Toops. Teddy Bridgewater now rooting the defense on. Third down for UCF. on the line. Offside. Defense, number 91 into the neutral zone, causing movement on the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Moving the chains with a minute 55. Here's Marcus Smith. Watch him right there, top of your screen. That little hesitation right there, what the official saw. Clock rolling a minute 49 to go. UCF has two timeouts. Bordeaux's throw is complete. It's the tight end Tukes again, fighting to the 42. A minute 32 remaining. At some point, UCF has got to stretch the field vertically. They've got to take a shot. I use a timeout with a minute 26. 35-31, Louisville on UCF. Two timeouts. 
timeout. One timeout remaining now for Central Florida. So last Thursday, Louisville defeated Rutgers by two touchdowns and yet was jumped by LSU and Texas A&M. Even if Louisville wins this game because of the eye test, because of a close game with Central Florida, what does that mean for the Cardinals? Well, I think Charlie Strong has a point. He was very frustrated after last week. They didn't get kind of the talk that he would have thought. They won a game. I think that's the most important thing. UCF is a quality football team. They've got an impressive win at Penn State. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with South Carolina. If Louisville holds on to win this game, I think you've got to look at it and say, hey, we, we took a punch, we withstood it, and we were, were able to come out with a win, most importantly. Look, we're only halfway through the season. There is a ton of football left. Look at all the teams that play each other alone. Alabama plays LSU. Clemson plays Florida State this weekend. A lot of those teams are going to start falling because they're playing each other. And next year, Louisville will be in the ACC. Bortles on second and five, complete. That's Josh Reese still rolling inside the 30-yard line. A minute 19 as the chains are moved. One timeout for UCF. They have it at the Louisville 30-yard line after a 29-yard completion to Josh Reese. Clock rolling again. Bortles, slam, caught, Godfrey. Inside the 20 yard line. Another first down. Clock stops temporarily with a minute six. Less than a minute to go. Bortles incomplete. Going to the end zone for Josh Reese. 52 seconds left. UCF trailed by three touchdowns in the third. They have a chance to win it. To hand Louisville their first loss of the season and give the Knights their biggest win in program history. Bortles to the end zone. Nobody there. It's incomplete. Third down. Two plays in a row. Blake Bortles just a little bit out of sync with his wide receivers. The first one looked like a throwaway, but that one there, clearly a miscommunication between Blake Bortles and his wide receiver on the outside. Remember the first possession of the game, they had the ball in the end red zone. Bortles threw an interception on a very similar play. Two downs here for UCF. The first down marker is at the nine. Clock to four. Bortles complete. That's Reese. First down inside the five yard line. First and goal. 38 seconds for UCF. The Knights have one timeout remaining. Bortles will spike it here. 33 seconds. Second and goal. Well, for all the talk of Teddy Bridgewater, what he means to this Louisville program, it's time for their defense. If they want to salvage undefeated season, the defense is going to have to come up big for a stop. And Charlie Strong will use a timeout here. He has two left. So a defensive timeout to regroup prior to second and goal. Carter Blackburn, Danny Cannell, Allison Williams. Eighth ranked, 6-0 Louisville. Trying to hold on on Friday night. UCF has second and goal from the five. And the Knights are going right into that packed student section. With Storm Johnson been the workhorse, they can run the ball with a timeout.
Here's Storm Johnson. Drop short of the goal line. 27 seconds. Lorenzo Molden makes the stop. George O'Leary uses his final timeout. It will be third and goal. 27 seconds left. I like that play call there. Trying to give it to Storm Johnson has been sensational tonight. You've been riding him all night. Why not try to ride him one more time? Try to sneak one in there on the ground. So you got third and goal here, two plays. Even without a timeout, 27 seconds can still run the football. Yeah, you don't want to get cute, though. You may want to save the run for fourth down if you don't get it on third down. Typically, the time allotment to run a play and get another playoff is around 17 seconds. So they do have plenty of time. If they go over there, call two plays on the sideline, they're ready to go. But man, you're asking those guys to get huddled up pretty quick. You'd rather probably go with a pass here and then open it up on fourth down. Blake Bortles on this drive, five of seven for 64 to set up third and goal for the Knights. If you do throw it, though, you want to make sure you throw it in the end zone. It's either a touchdown or an incomplete. Third and goal from the two. Bortles rolling to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, UCF. The Knights grab the lead with 23 seconds remaining. Jeff Godfrey makes the grab. And Louisville's undefeated season is in serious jeopardy once again. The Knights lead with 23 seconds to go. A historic drive for Blake Bortles and the UCF Knights. Moffitt's PAT wasn't pretty, but it sneaks through. And it's a three-point lead for Central Florida. 23 seconds left. The Cardinals still have two timeouts. UCF goes with a little sprint option pass. You see Godfrey, number two, just slips behind the defense. Everybody was thinking, up, oh, we're going to come up and attack the flat. Godfrey, the former quarterback, gets behind the defense. Well, you can see his own receiver, Ronell Hall, almost jumped up for that. But what a drive by Blake Bortles. George O'Leary likes what he sees. Remember I told you about Blake Bortles being calm, confident? Boy, he was ready for the moment. And Charlie Strong does not like that. Godfrey's first touchdown of his senior season, and it gives Central Florida the three-point lead. Now the challenge for Teddy Bridgewater and Louisville. 23 seconds, two timeouts. Can they give their kicker, John Wallace, a chance to tie it to go to overtime? Not much room for error for Teddy Bridgewater in Louisville. Is 23 seconds enough for a magical drive by Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals? They need a miracle. Kickoff is going to barely sail into the end zone for a touchback. That's a difference of 10 critical yards. So a touchback from the 25. How close was this to going out of bounds, which would have given Louisville outstanding field position. Wow, just sneaks inside the pylon. John Galvin, touchback. First and 10 from the 25. Oh, the crowd chanting Teddy. Louisville needs to get it to the UCF 35 with 23 seconds left in order to give John Wallace a chance to tie it. Teddy Bridgewater pumps. Clock rolling, 15 seconds, 14. Bridgewater forced out of bounds. To the 36-yard line. So the scenario is this. 
Bridgewater and Louisville needs 29 yards in order to give John Wallace a chance to tie it at the end of regulation. Two timeouts remaining for the Cardinals. If they can get it to the 35 yard line it would be a 52 yard kick from John Wallace. The Louisville coaches told us he's good from 50 plus tonight. They want to give him a chance. Bridgewater checked down over the middle of the field. Dominique Brown across the 50 has to have a timeout. Five seconds left. They have it at the 48-yard line. Is there a chance to run another play, or do you have to go for the end zone and the win at this point? Well, I tell you, you could try to get one more play, maybe throw a quick out to the sideline. You're not going to get the yardage you need anyway, though. That's just going to be too tough to ask. I feel like they got to take a Hail Mary here, take their shot. Five seconds, it's really tight. You think about the average football play takes six or seven seconds. To get within field goal range at this point, you would need about a 15-yard completion in three seconds and then get a yeah. timeout to get just, that field goal unit out there. I don't think that can happen. I think they're going to have to throw a Hail Mary, take their shot to the end zone. So Louisville's undefeated season and any chances at Playing for a national championship likely come down to this play. Five seconds remaining. Four wide receivers for Teddy Bridgewater. Five seconds left. One last shot for Bridgewater and the Cardinals. The deep ball all the way to the end zone. It is knocked away, and Central Florida hands Louisville its first loss of 2013. The biggest win in UCF history, upsetting eighth-ranked Louisville. Final score in Louisville, 38-35. Still more to come from Louisville. Sports Center, right now. Thank you for watching Knights Re-Air, presented by Dex Imaging, a proud sponsor of UCF Athletics. Dex Imaging is the nation's largest independent provider of office technology with a local touch. Dex Imaging, do business better. And in part by Tico People's Gas, delivering natural gas that helps you save energy. Visit peoplesgas.com. And this UCF football game sponsored in part by Todd Minor Law. Involved in an accident? Get a former insurance company attorney on your side.